Welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101. Check this out, guys. It is going down in Long Beach, guys. It's a street festival provided by Immersia, Blacklist, Cannabis Talk 101, and Catalyst. It's going down, guys, at Pine Street in between 4th and 6th Street in downtown Long Beach, guys. And it is about to go down tomorrow. Yes, it is, guys. And it's for Veterans Day. I know it's the day after Veterans, two days after Veterans Day, but they are supporting them. Can't wait. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be an amazing, amazing time, guys. And Cannabis Talk 101 is sponsoring the Veterans Stage, and it's going to be a lot of fun. But this is amazing for me because right now we're talking to— The first to, free veterans, the first 250 free veterans will get a, uh, a gift bag, too, that's sponsored by Catalyst. Oh, that's right. first 250 veterans that come in are going to get a free— gift bag and i heard this gift bag is loaded loaded with cool stuff guys so make sure you check that out guys it's going down we got to reach out to some of the weed for warriors and teams like that out there oh yeah mark that's gonna be a good event them all all involved guys but you know this is this is awesome joe and i appreciate you actually for for bringing the team up and and kind of you know asking them about their experiences you know because it's important to hear, you know, how they started, where they're at now, and what they've seen, and what they think about being yeah, on the road. Yeah, and I with want us. the I want the people that are listening to our show to meet some of these people that you hear us think on a daily basis of, for the show. And That's as you great. just heard from uh, several people right now, some of the guys, and and now we want to bring on the queens of our staff, <laughs> Hello. Uh, Erica and Jennifer. Welcome, you guys, to the show. Um, hey guys, thanks you guys for do randomly s- bring us on while we were it, working. And it's funny because, yeah, <laughs> you guys, uh, for together. those who don't know, like Jennifer oversees all, it feels like everything Everybody else you Chris heard. Frankino doesn't do. So it's like these two are bi- just such big parts of the crew and company. And Mark, for you to say that you literally remember the day that she started as an intern. Yeah. Yep. And, and to start here. But all that being said, Jennifer, we're talking to the, to the crew and staff saying, what did you like? But you have such a bigger journey. I'd like to go deeper with you and say, what have you learned from your internship and seen from the growth of this company and where it's at now? Because we just came off a big, huge MJ biz and share with the audience that's listening going, wow, somebody that started with meeting Mr. Christopher Wright Blue five years ago? How long ago was Six. it? It'll be five years five? in December. December what? Uh, it was like few days before Christmas because I waited after to show you my first video that I made. 2016. Yeah. And 2016. 2016. 2016. Which December. was coincidentally yep. when the Pop Brothers at Law came and joined Cannabis Talk 101. Probably three, four months before that. Well, also, yeah. it was yeah. when it was when legalization of cannabis happened. 2016, 2016. that's 2016. You know what Problem I mean? Like, it's, it's crazy because it was like, you know, we were already pushing, but but the 2016 yeah. is when Proposition 64 came, Jennifer came, Pop Brothers at Law came. I mean, all of it kind of happened. We legalized at the same time, brought the Pop Brothers in, then then Jennifer came in after. I mean, after. We did a uh, intern, uh, we did a uh, thing on a story on, yeah. you know, on Instagram. How did you hear about it, Jennifer? Uh, well, I was following the poppers at Law, and they posted uh, an ad, like, we're looking for interns to come work with us on Cannabis Talk 101, so, of course, it came down, and he introduced me to Blue, and I was there with Gilbert. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but... About your husband? Yeah, and it was funny, because we were Baby doing Daddy. an interview with Blue, and he's, like, right there, just saying all these good things about me, and I'm like, let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, okay, bro, of and, course and you're going to uh, talk about... Just well. of note, our young associate attorney, Patrick... Was at that same, same intern. Yeah, call. he showed up. Well, he flew in from Tennessee. Tennessee. He flew in, he flew in to from intern Tennessee. to intern with us as well. And and he was like, "Yo, I want to be an attorney. This is that." He's like, "I know this isn't for uh, attorney work, but uh, like he showed up, dude." And we were we had like a the full you house that be, day. Yeah, and Garden then, Grove. Yeah, Garden <laughs> Grove. We were in Garden Grove. We must have had like seventy people there, and and yeah. we used to have a lot more people. We had a studio audience before, and we had uh, green rooms, and and we, we we had a little too much fun before, <laughs> you know. I mean, we, we, were, we were learning, you know. But that's um, what came out of it. And and he, right here, hard work, perseverance, and willing the willingness to come in and, and intern, which is unpaid. Un, mm-hmm. Most internships are unpaid. You know, Jennifer, how was that? You, you get in, you get, the, you get the position. What happens to you? Oh, well, everything just went up for me. Cause, Going up and yeah. it's up when it's up and it's up. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well... Before working here, I was working at a local um, news station, and they weren't doing too well. You could see that they were, you know, losing their pace. And then I stumbled con- uh, across you guys, and uh, luckily there was uh, opportunity to grow within the company, and I did. And I just stuck by it, and just worked really hard, and sacrificed. 
Well, right now, you know, how many people do you think you're managing here at uh, Cannabis Talk? She could tell you, I'm 15. sure. Definitely 15. Yeah. She's got 15 yeah. people under her in five years, you guys. Let's give her a round of applause. Yeah. Right yeah. She is yeah. running this, the media show. Yeah. You know, I mean, listen, I, I, I've, That's amazing. you know, learned to love uh, Jennifer. You know, we've had our battles and she's a strong woman, so she knows how to battle. Um, and we've watched her grow as, as we, as we all have, you know, in the last five years. And, you know, um, you know, Jennifer, you, you are a very interesting person, you know, and I don't mean that in any ba in a bad way. I'm sincere. Like you, you look at things uh, differently than, than others and, and then you learn and then you want something and then you get it. Cause I remember, you know, you, you know, there was a point where you're like, look, I don't want to do that part of it. And I'm like, Jennifer, you have to do that part because we, we don't have anybody to do that part. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, dude, like I, you know, and, and then we, we battled on those things. Like we literally would be like, uh, you know, it's like, I don't want to take out the trash either, but I take out the trash, dude. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got to do this. And then, you know, but but by her battling those things with me, you know, it helped me grow. Right. Because now I thought, well, let's find another camera guy then. Boom. And now and then and then we had, you know, our battles with that. It's like, well, I didn't mean I didn't want to be at the event, you know, and, and it's like, well, you're not <laughs> shooting great anymore. Dancing. You know, but it, and, and so you start to grow with those things, you know, and, and you start to understand, OK, well, you know, now you're not in that position. Then it's like, well, you need to manage these people, you know, and she started managing these people. And, you know, tell us your experience with, you know, like, you know, bringing on, you know, new interns and, and, and watching the company growth and wh what your thoughts are. Well, we started doing that because because we got signed at iHeart. We're shooting five times a week. So we needed the help. I, I couldn't do it all by myself and neither could you guys. We had to bring more people in and uh, it was just awesome to grow. Um, so now that I got a lot of people, we have a lot of help, and uh, I'm just really thankful. And I'm, I learned from our interns as well, and they teach us a lot of things, and uh, it's just a great experience. One thing, let's talk about uh, MJ BizCom for a second, and uh, you know, what you, tell us about your experiences with with us at MJ BizCon, and and what what it's like to be in a live setting with us versus in studio. Oh man, it's fast paced as usual, but things are, you know, we have to. Uh, make sure we're doing everything correctly having pushing out content for everybody because that's what the people want um, It's just fast-paced everyone working really hard um, We play work hard and play hard. So that was a great experience as well one experience from MJ BizCon. Yeah, that something that stood out to you. Like, what, what was your big? You. you came home and didn't tell your husband. <laughs> <laughs> not that part. Not that part. Oh, man. Uh, uh, yeah, what's what's, what's, what's a, a good story a, for you? Story? Well, the party turned out to be way better than I expected it to be. It was like... Oh, really, thanks for the support. Yeah, yeah. so no, like... <laughs> thanks I, for believing in us. Yeah. Always believing in us. Jeez, wow. Go ahead, I'm just I knew, No, I know. It's just like, I knew I knew we were going to throw a great party, but it was, it was way more people than I expected. I was like, wow, that just went through the roof. Yeah. So that was... Literally. Yeah. It's amazing to see our growth, <laughs> Almost right? Almost got shut down. Yeah. <laughs> so many people. You know, it, it, it's funny because I, I, I was amazed too, you know, and, and, and not in the sense where it's like, I know we, we you know, we're, we're well loved and respected in the industry, but I, as we've watched it grow, you know, it's like... You know, we, we put it in into Eventbrite or Event High, and then you know, fifteen hundred people registered. Boom! And I was like, wow, that was quite a. Poop. How did that happen? Yeah, that was a lot of people, you know. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, and then you're like, yeah, you know, but that doesn't mean everybody's gonna show up. Exactly. And then we put it up again, and another five hundred people registered. And I'm like, you know, we had to leave it up because I'm like, leave it up because we need the leads, you know. With that lead gen from from that was super important for us, and you know, and, and as we we got there, and it's like. You know, we showed up at like 9.30, which I, I, I you know, my fault for doing that. I, I wish I would have showed up at right after the event. I even told myself, I need to go straight from the event to the event. I'll worry about showering and changing and do all that stuff. But I actually went back to the to the uh, Airbnb, showered, changed, and then and took a 20-minute nap that turned into 45 minutes. And I pulled up at, you know, at 9, 9.15. And I'm like, damn, there's people in line at 9.15, you know. And it wasn't a lot, but it was like 10 or 15 people. And, and they were like, yo, are you going to let us in or not? And there was actually a, a, a position where I had to go like stop a guy and I had to go chase him down and be like yo dude like don't go spreading that rumor because the guy at the front door was like yo we're not letting anybody up till 11 and he was talking about the top mm. floor at the top floor you know and I was and he was like we're not waiting till 11 he's like I'm gonna tell everybody we're all gonna leave and I was like I had to, and he's walking over there hey guys trying to you know create this like bad vibe and I, I had to walk up on him and be like look man 
I'm going to let you guys in right at 10 o'clock, like we said. It's at the, the top floor. is not open until 11. We've got an exclusive, you know, comedy show going on for some clients upstairs. That After that show is done, we're going to allow everybody else to come up there. But, you know, some of the sponsors and things like that had a, a, a comedy show going on for them, you know, that was, that was you know, for them. And so, you know, and even some of the other sponsors that weren't invited to that were like, yo, what's going on with that comedy show? How come I can't get up there? And we're like, yo, you're not part of that, that, that team, you know? But, but it was weird because at... 10 o'clock it was like okay there's like 300 people on the front and then you're like okay like this isn't going to fill this place this is a 70,000 square foot three level you know a strip club that just has massive amounts of rooms and stuff like that and then all of a sudden it was like you know 11 o'clock you know i'm seeing like okay there's five or 700 people out front now now i'm getting scared because i'm like yo dude how are we gonna handle all these people an hour later by midnight there was a thousand fucking 500 people out front and and they weren't happy. They were they were like, yo, we yeah, want, this is we literally want the in. biggest event, we, like we, for all of us too, like for this event and this thing. Uh, it was great. Yeah, it happened and it, so and, every, quick. and it didn't happen without everybody's help too. And that's why just looking at everybody and looking at you, Jennifer, from changing this and changing that. And for folks that don't know, like Jennifer has to change things for us on the fucking drop of a dime for certain things. I just sent her some emails, which I I actually know how to speak to Jennifer, which is funny, because she pointed it out to me today, which is like a dancing learning lesson of. I know how to speak to Jennifer and changing something like this pay like and she just looks at it and she gets happy. Thank you, Joe. This is exactly what I needed and I can do my job perfect for you guys. And it's just like that learning curve and everything you do, Jennifer, doesn't get overlooked and we just so appreciate you. That being said, we brought another young lady in. How, here, how is it how is it working for, for uh, Blue right here? How you do you like it? What do you mean? Do, do you like it? Do they like what? Oh, she do like. Do you like don't let her crush you. I'm gonna let her crush. I want don't her to. Let she's her gonna crush, crush me. Yeah, let her crush. Do me. I like working with you? Yeah, of course. If, I wouldn't be here if I did it. <laughs> See that, you Joe? Like, she, how you about have to Joe? Go with the good and the bad. <laughs> yeah. How about Joe now? She's like, oh god. How about Joe? He's oh, Joe. Joe. Joe is awesome. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Joe. <laughs> you she make likes things fun. Erica, you started off as an intern your senior year in college with us. I'll never forget the day you came in with a group of different interns that we brought all in. All graduated. That time, all graduating. That was awesome. And then we said, we want you on the team. Since you've been on the team now, you've been working in the office forever, and then you finally get a chance to go out to a few local events with us, I well, believe. Well, she went from an intern to an employee. Yeah. Let's not forget and, that And part. now you're, you're getting paid here. How is that going to MJ Biz and going to the big Super Bowl with us? Tighter well, the mic. actually, Zach was just asking me about events because he wants to go to events. And I told him, it's really fun, but it's tiring and really intense. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> Explain. be prepared. Explain. Um, it's just so fast-paced. Mm -hmm. So much work in so little time. But yeah. it, it's really fun overall. It's like, and folks, if you're listening and think, like, we got to take this big show set, all these things, set it up there. And especially that Trust. we had an after party. Trust. Like, Lights, we're all LED sitting there. Lights. We had everybody all hands on deck well, putting so much stuff together. So The, the way I like to, to give people an idea, it's 22,000 pounds of, of freight. Literally. You know what I mean? So we pushed 22,000 pounds of freight across the United States, put it into a trade show. We unload it. First of all, we load it. First of all, we unload it from our office building into a, a truck, then push hold it on, across. Hold on, hold on. Up a two-story building with no a elevator. And we're on the second floor. Yeah, and we're on the second break floor, that one guys. Down. And we, we tear it all down. We push it. We push it into a truck, and then we move it across the country, and then we build it. In the, then we take it off the truck, build it in the show, do a show for sometimes three days, sometimes two days, sometimes five days, and then we tear it all down, and, and then we throw an after party at, 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 every night, and then we tear it all down, put it back, get it across the country, and then put it back upstairs and do our show again. It's Cannabis Talk 101, Erica. Your memory that you went down with going, okay, this was the memory of MJ Biz. What is something? Going to Fremont Street and hanging out. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. That I, was I heard that from a few people. Was, was well, that's funny because when I was driving home with Christian, Christian said going and hanging out with you guys on Fremont Street was one of the best times that he was out there. So I can't imagine what you guys did behind our backs like that. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> I was kind of thinking away. about that because, like, I was thinking about how when you, like, travel with people, like, I feel like that's, like, a way to bond. Because, like, I, like, I went to, like, Daniel was at Houston and, and Vegas. And like, so now that's I, your don't, dog, I don't right? know who else I've been to both Houston and Vegas with. I haven't traveled a lot. Sure. So I just think traveling in general, like there's like a connection with those people. You start to. Oh, that's out. right, folks. For those that are listening, our cute little Erica, her very first plane ride was so, from yeah. Yeah. L.A. to uh, Houston. And it was the cutest thing ever. She had guys I've never been on a plane before. <laughs> and they made her sit alone. 
Chris Franchino, you dirty bastard. <laughs> he updated his seat. And he updated his seat. He was supposed to sit next to her. Erica, you're another one that we just truly appreciate. And all the videos that you're seeing are, are coming from a, a lot of people. But these two women are overseeing them and, and making sure that it's quality. And you guys are quality. And we love you very much. Erica, real quick, your, your, your best moment, though. Was it Fremont? Is that what it was? Your best moment in, in, at MJ VizCon this year with us. Um, actually, I think just going to a strip club for the first time. That was, that was really your first interesting time at a strip club? Yeah. Oh, nice. That she, was cool. she didn't give us the memo on that one. <laughs> I know. Jeez, I would have gave you a lap dance. <laughs> yeah, she geez. told me a dad, you did you, did you get a lap dance? <laughs> no. Oh, so you didn't go to a strip club then. You yeah, just you watched it at the strip it club. Okay, <laughs> well, it's, it's Cannabis Talk 101. When we come back, we still got to hear from Pitt, Irtazar, and Frank Kino. And Frank Kino. We'll be right back after this.